So in 2010, we solved the crystal structure of the Tolby box of Colosin A, shown here in green, uh, with Tol B, shown in grey. We were then able to compare that with the previously deduced crystal structure of the complex between the Tolby box of Colosin E9, shown in red, and Tol B. The comparison of the two structures shows that there is um, some similarity in the protein fold, but also some differences in the specific interactions of both um, Tolby boxes. We know that colosin A binds to TOL A, whereas the enzymatic colosins do not bind to TOL A. To enhance our understanding of the translocation of colosin A there, we wanted to determine the co-crystal structure of the TOL A binding region of colosin A with TOL A3. Unfortunately, when we made the two proteins and formed the complex, and then put the complex down crystallisation trials, we were not able to produce any crystals under any crystallisation conditions. We know from our work with the enzymatic colosins that the N-terminus of these colosins contains regions of intrinsic disorder that do not produce any electron density. Combined with the, the fact that TOL A3 undergoes structural unfolding on binding the T-domain of colosin A, we wondered whether this intrinsic disorder of the N-terminus of colosin A was um, the result of the inability to form any crystals of the complex. Therefore. We wanted to put the translocation domain of colosin A expressing the first 107 residues through an in silico analysis and a disorder plot to determine what region of the translocation domain of colosin A contains intrinsic disorder. So we used RON software to conduct our disorder plot and we showed that the first half of colosin A expressing residues TA to 1 to 52 contain a region of high intrinsic disorder and this region actually contained the Tolby box whereas the second half of the polypeptide from residues 53 to 107 had a high propensity for a structured, structured domain. And within this domain there was two non-contiguous regions that were shown previously to be TOL-A binding regions. So what we wanted to do was um, express the polypeptide, the TA1 to 107 polypeptide, and then chemically cleave that into the two constituent parts so that we could separate a structured domain containing the TOL-A binding region from the unstructured domain containing the Tolby box. So we did this using thrombin cleavage and we inserted a thrombin cleavage site after residue 52. We were able to make a TA1 to 107 protein containing the thrombin cleavage site and then chemically cleave it using thrombin into the two constituent parts. We were able to purify the TA53 to 107 protein away from um, TA1 to 52 protein using metal chelate chromatography because the TA53 to 107 protein contains a histidine tag, whereas the TA1 to 52 protein does not. We then need to make sure that the TA53 to 107 protein still has tight affinity to TOL A3, and we use the SPR to do this. Despite having 10 orders of magnitude lower affinity than the larger uh, translocation domains, and indeed colosin A, the magnitude of affinity of TA53 to 107 with TOL A3 was still in the micromolar range and therefore still suitable for complex formation and crystallisation trials. We therefore formed the complex and put the complex protein through crystallisation trials. We were able to solve the structure of TA53 to 107 protein with TOL A3. We showed that the structure contained residues 329 to 421 of TOL A3 and residues 57 to 97 of TA53 to 107. TOL A3 was shown to have four alpha helices and three beta strands. It's very similar to the solution structure of the uncomplex TOL A3 previously determined and also to the structure of the fusion protein between TOL A3 and the G3P protein. TA53107 contained two pairs of beta strands at the N and the C termini and these are connected by a hairpin loop. The structure TA53-107 to is unique and it has the appearance of a skipping rope whereby if you grabbed hold of the two beta strands, pulled them apart, the two beta strands would act as the hand grips of the skipping rope and the loop would actually act as the rope itself. And the interaction occurs between three beta strands of the beta sheet of TOL A3 and the two beta strands at the C terminus of TA53-107 to forming a five beta strand beta sheet where the alpha helices of TOL A3 are on one side and the end terminal beta strand and the loop of the colosin are on the other side. The interaction between the two molecules occurs in the edges of beta sheets forming an anti-parallel beta sheet interaction which is indicative of a beta strand addition reaction which is commonly seen in promiscuous protein-protein interactions 
and specifically through beta sheet augmentation. If you look at the interface, the interface consists of a number of intermolecular interactions and hydrophobic apolar contacts. There are six hydrogen bonds, direct hydrogen bonds between the colosin and tole 3 and there are three hydrogen bonds across phenylalanine 94 of the colosin and aspartate 377 of tole 3 that are mediated by a water molecule. We wanted to look at the contribution of each of these residues to the interaction and therefore we used alanine scanning mutagenesis. We made single mutations and also multiple mutations. We found that not one single mutation uh, abolished the interaction of the colosin against sensitive cells. Um, the effect of multiple mutations was additive such that three mutations were needed in the colosin to abolish the interaction, uh, whereas all five residues at the interface of tole 3 were needed to abolish the interaction of the colosin against sensitive cells. Further analysis of the crystal structure showed that there were three pairs of cation pi interactions um, on either side of the beta sheet interface. Cation pi interactions are very important for molecular recognition, specificity and stability of protein-protein interactions. Our cation pi interactions are formed by the rearrangement of participating residues and also rearrangement of surrounding residues such that the N-terminal nitrogen atom of side chain residues of the lysine um, residues of tole 3 align above the aromatic side chains of aromatic residues of the colosin. The importance of the cation pi interactions was shown by the making the alanine mutant of tyrosine 58, which completely abolishes the interaction and also the biological activity of the colosin. Superimposition of and comparison of tole 3 and complex with TA53 to 107 that we've determined in this work with the fusion complex of tole 3 with G3P shows that the tole binding ligands bind to different beta strands of the same beta sheet of tole 3, placing the binding ligand on opposite sides of the tole 3 molecule. This indicates that the binding of TA53 to 107 to tole 3 is a unique binding event and shows that tole 3 binds to multiple interaction sites of multiple binding partners, um, giving us the indication that tole 3 is a promiscuous hub protein.